Welcome everybody to another episode of Forgotten Coast Fishing. My name's David and I fish inshore and offshore showing you what I do to find and catch fish. If that sounds appealing, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. That goes a long way to help me to continue to create these videos. Plus you won't miss my future videos. It's the last day of December. It's a little bit chilly. Started out in the lower 30s and we're gonna get up to the lower 60s. Sun's supposed to stay out all day. Kinda got a light wind. So looking for a good day today. But what we're gonna do to begin with anyway is we're gonna work this intercoastal waterway, see if we can pick up some sheep's head, redfish, black drum, trout, who knows. Well, let's get out there at our spot and let's see what we can put in the box. All right, so we're at our spot. I found these pilings and things. Looks like there's some rocks and things over here. Barnacle growth on them, so it might be a good spot for sheep's head. But I get to try out my new Christmas present today. This is an Engel live bait cooler, 13 quart. Been excited to get this. It's got this rechargeable lithium battery um, aerator. And as you can tell, it's very, very quiet as opposed to the kind of the traditional one with the batteries. So that's kind of nice. It's also got this basket in it, you know, where you can pull your shrimp out and not have to use the net and that kind of thing. I'm gonna kind of look for a smaller shrimp. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pinch this tail off. And I've got this one ounce bird of prey fiddler crab jig with this number one live bait hook on it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna feed this hook where I pinch the tail off just up through the body up towards the head. Once it kind of makes its way up through the hook and gets to the head, I'm gonna pull it out right there just to expose the hook a little bit. And on top of that, I've got a 20 pound fluorocarbon leader that's tied with a double uni knot to 20 pound braid. This is a TFO professional medium seven foot six rod. And this is a Okuma Simar C40 reel. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna kind of cast close to these pilings. And as you can see, the current's going this way. So I'm gonna let it kind of drift down to the bottom, leave it a little slack to do that. And then just hope we attract a sheep's head. How you doing? Good. No, I just showed up. I haven't got any bites though. Been here about 10 minutes, but nothing so far. We did pretty good on the sheep head earlier this week. Yeah, it was a little warmer, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. I think that's the key sometimes. Got a lot of current too, so I don't know if that plays a part in it. Yeah, the current wasn't as strong the other day. Yeah, that's what I found. A little less current, a little warmer. Yeah, they may have run out to some warmer water somewhere. It's just, do we want to chase them out there or not, you know? <laughs> exactly. All right, you too. Well, that's what I was thinking. It was a little warmer this week. We had a cold front come through a couple days ago, and it's a little bit cooler than it was when that guy was talking about catching sheep's head. So we'll see. I did wait as long as I could to let it warm up before the next cold front comes through, which is tomorrow. We got some more rain and wind and stuff coming. So if you can wait, you know, to those warmer days after those cold fronts during the winter. Oftentimes that proves to be your more, more successful days. All right, so what I'm gonna do while I'm working this bank over here to see if we can pick up something over here, I'm gonna cast something out to the middle of this intercoaster waterway. There's different holes and different things out here. So that could pick up something as well. Might as well stick something out there to have two rods out, but what I'm gonna use, I've got this kind of single hook dropper rig set up, and this is a one ounce bank seeker on the bottom. This is that same 20 pound fluorocarbon, and this is a kale hook. And I've got a swivel up here. This is up to 15 pound braid. This is a medium type rod, and this is a pin clash to 2500. So I picked out one of my bigger shrimp this time, and I'm gonna hook it through the head kind of you find those little black spots go right in front of that and you can hook that kale hook right through there and it'll kind of hold good and um, kind of make for a, a good presentation as well so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of just cast this out I don't really need to go too far and then I'm gonna set up 
set this up here where I can kind of keep an eye on it. Gonna kind of set out a lighter drag so if it does get pulled, it'll pull that drag out instead of the rod. And just kind of keep an eye on that. And if we're lucky, it'll pick up something. Oh man. All right, I think we got him. Oh yeah, we got him. We got him, we got him, we got him. Got him, got him, got him. All right. Let's see what it is. Let's see. Hopefully it's something other than a catfish. Catfish are known to kind of be down in these holes. Let's see, what have we got? He's feeling like a catfish going down to the bottom like that. But you never know till you see him. Yep. It's a catfish. It's a nice one, good sized one. I'm not ready to quite start keeping these guys yet. So let's get him off and get him back down. Heavy dude. All right, looks like we got another one here. Let's see if this is our catfish again or something different. Seems to be kind of coming to the top. Maybe he was so far out there. Oh uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's a catfish. Just hoping for something different. Yep, catfish. All right, so I've worked that intercoastal waterway a lot this morning, several hours. I've come out into the bay, worked some of these buoys and different things, but it's kind of a calm day. I'm gonna head offshore and uh, get over some of those reefs and see if we can't pick up something there. to our reef we're about seven eight miles offshore or so and about 60 feet of water so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna just start out with this double drop rig and put some of this live shrimp on here this is made up with 30 pound uh, mono and this is a four ounce bank sinker at the bottom and these are three out circle hooks and i'm i pulled out my pin battle 5000 and this is a Shimano Talus PX medium heavy rod. And this is 30 pound braid on it. So I'm just gonna drop this to the bottom. This is some of the reefs I come to in the Grady. It's kind of nice coming in the bay boat in such a nice, calm, sunny day. Cause I get to use the uh, trolling motor spot lock and don't have to worry with the anchor so much. But we'll see what we pull up with this live shrimp here. All right, all right, so we got something on our first drop here. Oh man, let me tighten up my drag a little bit. All right, not a monster. Let's see what we get. Nonetheless, fun to come out here and catch a fish. That's for sure. Oh, red snapper. Man, if you watched my last video, which was just filmed uh, four or five days ago, man, that's all I caught was red snapper. Hate to complain about them. But when they're out of season and a little too small and that's all you're catching, it's easy to start to complain about them. But let's get this guy on back. See what else we can catch. All right, here he is again. Second drop, second fish. Maybe it's going to be one of those kind of days again. Let's see what we get. Red snapper. Like it's the same one we just got. Let's get this guy back. There you go. I'm kind of hoping for some white trout. It was about this time last year, I was out in this same area and got a lot of, got into a lot of white trout. Kind of hoping we kind of do that again. In fact, that was my first video right at about a year ago. Yeah, I think there's something else down there besides red snapper. I'm getting kind of, not really nibbles, but not as a strong of, of an attack. And he's not getting hooked. Usually those, I mean, those red snappers have such big mouths, they're not going to have any 
trouble getting this one, I guess, unless it's a small red snapper. All right, here we go again. Oh man, they're getting bigger. Look at that head shake. Yeah, they're getting bigger. Now we can keep trigger fish. This is the absolutely last day of trigger fish season. So we could, oh man, spoke it and it came true. And I don't think he's gonna be a keeper, but he's a trigger. We have something to kind of work towards here, getting a keeper trigger on the last day of the season. Let's get a measurement on him just to be sure. I don't think he's gonna make it. Now you measure these guys to the fork. So you put that little middle part of the tail deck there and we're not even 14 so i didn't think he was going to make it so he was a little shy of 14 but pretty fish aren't they very pretty fish all right well that's good to know there's trigger fish here so i think we've got our goal for today it's changed obviously we were inshore in the intercoastal waterway you know trying to maybe hook up some sheep's head or redfish or something like that that obviously didn't pan out so such a calm beautiful day i can't get over it you know we've had so much wind recently and to come out here on this bay boat seven miles out get this kind of calm weather doesn't happen all the time especially in the winter so now we got our goal out here so let's try to get that keeper trigger fish and get him in the box oh here we go oh man Here's the biggest one so far today. This just came up and just snatched it. So probably a red snapper, but we shall see. Yep. Yep, just a bigger red snapper. He might make the, the 16 inch minimum size for, yeah, he would be a keeper for sure. Let's get you back, dude. There you go. All right, since I've got this double drop rig and I'm kind of not wanting to use all my live shrimp up too quickly, I'm gonna put a live shrimp on the bottom and I've got some squid I'm gonna put on the top just to kind of give a little variety. I'm sure they'll hit both of those equally well, but we'll see. Oh, oh, oh man, he got off. Well, I thought they might hit this equally as well, but I may be mistaken. I've dropped it down twice and lost my shrimp that was on the bottom both times while the squid was still here. So I don't know if that means anything. Sometimes just because this one was on the bottom, you know, since their fish are most likely on the bottom, that's the one closest to them, I don't know. All right, that makes the third drop where they've gotten the shrimp and they've left the squid. And after, you know, I lost this, I've left it down a couple minutes and they're not hitting the squid at all, that's strange. All right, I'm going to go ahead and make a move. The bite here has pretty much come to a standstill. So I think we're going to move out a little deeper. I'm just kind of hoping that maybe bigger trigger fish will be out there. All right, we moved a little deeper. It's about 10 feet deeper. I don't know if that's going to make much of a difference, but it's a different type of structure. Oh, all right. Oh, man. First drop here. Boy, this has got some weight to him. Let's see what we've got. Boy, I'd love to get that last my keeper trigger on the last day of the season that'd be kind of cool it is a trigger doing his flat body technique but he's not going to be big enough he's 12 13 inches something like that but a trigger fish we've got our target species we just need to get the right sized one now there you go buddy Oh, oh man. Oh, here's a good one. Here's a good one. Here's a good one. All right, come be a trigger. Come on, be a trigger. Yep, here's a good one. This may be the biggest fish we've caught all day today. We did get that about 18 inch or so red snapper earlier. This one's that size or maybe a touch bigger. Oh, oh no, it's our trigger. Oh man, he may be big enough. He might just be big enough. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Maybe, maybe, maybe. It's gonna be iffy. Let's give him a let's give him a measure. No. He wound up being 14. So gonna get him back. 
boy, he had a lot of pull to him for that size. A lot of pull to him. Oh, oh, here he is again. Man, another good one. I don't think he's as big as that last one, but I thought that last one was bigger than what he was. Maybe this one that doesn't feel so good is, oh man, a flounder. Flounder, flounder, flounder. I don't think he's gonna be big enough. But that's cool. I was kind of hoping to grab a flounder at some point in time. All right, let's get a measurement on him. All right, no, he's not big enough. He's a little over 11 and they've got to be 14. So these guys are so cool. I'm sure you've seen these before. You know, flounder lay on the bottom flat. And so they've got their eyes on both sides of their head. So they'll lay in that sand, kind of bury themselves. And you can see, you know, their body color is like you know like the sand is down there so they can camouflage themselves just kind of wait for something like my shrimp and just kind of pop up and grab it but very cool guys i was excited about to get this one i'd sure love to get a keeper well, let's get him back down there he goes hey that's cool that's very cool about 70 feet deep and i get a flounder Let's see if we can get our keepers. Now we got a couple keepers now that's got our interest. That keeper trigger obviously, and now we know there's flounder down here. Maybe we could even get a keeper flounder. All right, I'm gonna go back to using both shrimp again, both live shrimp. I do have some dead shrimp when we run out, but I feel like that shrimp is the ticket right now. Oh, all right, here he is. I was checking the depth finder make sure we were still in the reef because I wasn't getting a bite but all of a sudden we got something pretty decent here what have we got trigger fish no red snapper no lane snapper all right everybody we have our fish for the box today that's for sure all right check them out love these lane snapper love them love them love them mostly because they're good eating and number two there's not a closed season on them. And so you can keep them year round. And this guy's gonna be big enough. So we're gonna get him in the box. Let's get this guy in the sun where you can see him real good. Check him out, he's got those kind of pinkish reddish head with the pinkish reddish tail, those yellow lines on them. Man, these are some of the most beautiful fish to me. And like I said, really good eating. So let's get him in the box. Beautiful fish, beautiful fish. All right. Oh, oh man. All right. First drop at our new reef. There's a dolphin over there. Hopefully kind of staying next to those guys over there. But if he knows I'm catching fish, he may be on his way over here. Oh, it's a little gag grouper. Man, I don't know what number species this is. Red snapper, um, lane snapper, Sand perch, catfish, gag grouper. I don't know, maybe he's missing something else in there, but anyway, check this little guy out. He's out of season, but obviously way too small. But I love these gag groupers. Great eating, fun to catch. But we need to get this little guy back. There's the dolphin right there. There's his wake. He's just gonna go over to whoever's catching fish, I guess. Maybe those guys will pull up something big over there. Those guys over there are probably like, all right, that dude showed up right over there. Maybe the dolphin will go over there. Yeah, I hear you, dude. All right, here he is. All right, it's a good one too. Man, I know that dolphins. Oh, geez. I gotta get this guy up fast. Mm. Oh, man. Look, there he is right there. There's the dolphin. See him right there? Yep, he was coming after this fish. But I got him up fast enough. Red snapper. All right, you better go, buddy. Oh, no, man. I think he got him. Jeez, that dolphin was waiting under the boat. Oh man. Well, 
I guess everybody's got to eat. Okay. All right. Oh, here he comes. Oh, man, and I don't have this drag tight enough either. Oh, man, he's coming to get it. Oh, he's coming to get it. Ah, oh, man. I'd rather it not be Red Snapper. All right, Red Snapper, go that way. While the dolphin was over here, maybe he made it. All right, Red Snapper, we want your cousin, the Lane Snapper. Two of those would make a great dinner. And he's right there. He is waiting, waiting, waiting for this fish. Okay, here he is. Right, let's see if we can get him up. He's not as big as the other, so. Oh, man. Here he comes. Oh, man, another grouper. Another little gag grouper. All right, well, he, we know he's over there. All right, quick look at the grouper. I'm just leaving. All right, here he is. All right. Oh man, he's got a little weight to him. Oh gosh, he's got a lot of weight to him actually. I don't know if I can get him. Oh man, it's a good red snapper. Jeez. Jeez. Look at that guy. All right. Dolphin's in the front of the boat. Oh man, he's swimming that way. Okay, go, snapper. Go, 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 go. All right, made it. Just have to figure out where the dolphin is and toss the fish out to the other side. Looks like they're making it down that way. Oh. All right. Come on, trigger fish. Come on, lane snapper. Keep her trigger. Keep her lane, to be specific. Ah, oh, red snapper. Well, we have caught our share of red snapper today. Oh good, dolphin's taking off. Oh, here we go. All right, boy, it's nice not have to toss these guys up so hard. Knowing that dolphin's way away. What have we got here? Oh man, we got a flounder again. Red snapper and a flounder. All right, that's a cool catch. Can't say that. I've done that too many times. Both small. Snapper's out of season anyway. We would be able to keep the flounder, like I said, but he's gonna be too small. But I sure am happy about getting him. I just wanna show you this guy. Let's get him in the sun. Check him out. And all those spots on him. Brown spots, the light spots, kind of in circles. There's both of his eyes on his head. Just can totally camouflage himself like that. There you go. Oh, there's a good one. <laughs> All right, come on. Something besides a red snapper. But it's a red snapper. Well, if this is any indication by this trip and my last trip of all the red snapper I caught, I think last trip I caught about 18, I think I counted, red snapper. Two or three were keepers, but the rest were smaller. Kind of like today. I don't know how many that is today, but if that's any indication on next season, once these fish grow a little bit, man, it's gonna be a great red snapper season. This one was too, and they ended up extending it. So I'm, I'm hoping this next year, they go ahead and give us, you know, a good block. It's all encouraging, even though they're a little bit nuisance right now, because I'd like to get other things for the future. I think that bodes well. What a great day. Like I said, I can't believe this weather. As bad and rough and windy and cold and rainy as it's been for about a month, it seems. I come out and get this flat, calm, got this wonderful sun beating down on the water, wonderful clouds, and wonderful fishing. If you like this video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing. 
that helps me to continue to create these videos, helps us build our community over here, and helps you to not miss my future videos. So until next time, I hope to see you on another episode of Forgotten Coast Fishing.